Today we are taking flight in Dragonflight with Platinum WoW. I got exclusive access to World of Warcraft's new expansion Dragonflight and I'm going to tell you all about the new race, class, zones, characters and lore. I got a lot to you know what the coolest thing is? Like one of the best things they have done. They finally gave Kalagos a new skin. He was like the most pixelated character standing around in Dalaran. Like seriously. <laughs> it's cool that he has a new skin. I like his new skin actually. ...and lore. I got a lot to talk about so let's jump right into it. I started my adventure by making a Drakthir. Bartholomew. Bartholomew. And there are lots and lots and lots of customization options. Almost an overwhelming amount, and that's for a good reason. It's the nice. armor you equipped cannot be seen in your dragon form. All of the armor customization is done when you create your character. Instead, the armor you equipped in Transmog can only be seen in your humanoid form. But thankfully, this form is something you'll see all the time. It's not like a worgen where you have to manually turn it on and off. You'll have an option to transform back into a human after combat and even cast some spells while in that form. Also, whenever you mount up, you turn into your humanoid form. Drakthir can only be one class, and that is the new class, Evoker. Yay. The gameplay for this new class is advanced. So advanced that Blizzard has you write the word advanced. I think that is a big joke. I thought actually, like, I know already people are going to make a big meme about it. And there are already some memes on Reddit about that. But why would you do that? That looks that is so weird. Like, the whole text, like, let's read this. Are you sure? No, wait, let's go back there. Wait, I hope we can read that. Okay, it doesn't show the other ones. But there, there was, like, a text saying something like, uh, I'm trying to remember it. Uh, it was something like, uh, it is not suggested to pick this class for new players because it's too advanced or something like that. <laughs> and if you, if you like uh, try to then use it, then there's like another text and this is this one. Are you sure you'll miss the tutorial if you proceed? We recommend starting with a different class. You can always come back once you are uh, more familiar with the game. I think that's so stupid because uh, the Death Knight and the Demon Hunter, you could also say it's an advanced uh, class. I feel like all the hero classes are freaking advanced classes, but uh, Death Knight doesn't have that. You write the word advanced when you create the character. Stupid. Evokers are a caster class and they have a very wide variety of abilities. They're very and cool squishy, animations. so if you're fighting a group of mobs, you'll need to constantly root them, push them back, and maintain your distance or you'll die very quickly. Reminds me of Rogue early game leveling. It's also a bit squishy. I think their skills look cool though, the animations. Especially this one. Now, would I main this class? No, probably not. It honestly feels a bit clunky when first picking it up, but perhaps if I had more experience it would flow a bit better. But one of the cool things about Drakthir is their ability to use their new racial, which is a dragon riding ability that just uses themselves. And yeah, let's talk about the best feature that has ever been added to WoW in years. I think this is so cool, like the, the, the riding, that they can fly themselves. If you look at Demon Hunter, you can glide with your wings and stuff like that. It's nice, but you they needed to add something to the drag here to make it different from Demon Hunter that already has wings. So I think it's cool that they gave you the ratio to freaking fly. I mean, on the Wargen, you can turn into a ground mount basically with your ratio skill, right? So it's cool to have a, a, a class or a race that can also fly instead of on the ground like the Wargen. Years. And flying is really cool now. It's very Ever fast, since actually. flying mounts came out in TBC, they have been incredibly boring. Instead of flying, it's more like swimming through the air. Yeah. With this new form of flight, there is physics, a smooth sense of movement, and, and most speed, importantly, finally. you actually have to interact with the terrain to get from point A to point B. Dragon riding is more like gliding than flying. You can descend quickly to gain momentum and use mount abilities to gain speed. This yeah. means that mounting up and trying to scale up a mountain vertically will not work, but when descending, you will go super, super fast. And really, watching this flying doesn't do it justice. You have to play it yourself to understand how nice it really feels. Yeah, it feels really good. And what I like here is also that they increase the speed. Like, there's something I've noticed about, like, freaking flying in World of Warcraft. 
For like an eternity we had the same freaking flying speed. Our levels got higher, we got like more and more expansions, but flying always had the same kind of speed. And it's nice to, nice to see finally a speed increase, because in my opinion flying is way, was like way too slow in World of Warcraft. Like they could have pushed it higher by another 10-20 person speed even more. Why do we have this kind of plane sound? What actually happens if you crash into something? I, I need to try that. You take damage. It, it looks it looks nice and it's so great i wish it was the only form of flying but i think some of the older zones are not designed for this type of flight and also you can't use your dragon mounts while in the old world but you can use the drakthir racial flying so i went all the way up to the top of mount hyjal and flew off to see how far i could get with the drakthir flying i soared all the way to dust willow marsh in three minutes and 44 seconds Whoa. i tried to fly to the exact same location with a normal flying mount and that took 6 minutes and 26 seconds. Holy shit. You guys see the speed increase? This is just what I said like uh, a few seconds ago. Like you, like the, it was way too slow the flying. Like look at this 6 minutes and 26. And if you have like the, the increase, like with the new flying, it's like half the time about that, right? It's like you're twice as fast. And I think this is so cool. Like f we have like so many zones and they are so huge. I would actually like to be able to fly faster. And I think people would more likely fly around than use portals then. Because right now everyone's like using their freak, like the freaking portals in the capital city. But if you can fly fast, you don't care. Like, huh, I take a portal, I fly for one, two minutes from A to B, doesn't matter. And then people actually go back to older zones just for fun, just to speed fly through, right? And have a look at the, the atmosphere there. So given the perfect conditions, I think it's even faster than a normal flying mount. Okay, back to the Dragonflight stuff. The one zone I had access to was the Azure Span. Yes, I tried to go to the other zones, but they kicked me out. And it's beautiful. Very reminiscent of like Grizzly Hills, Hills yeah. and I cannot emphasize how big it really is. It's huge. It's the biggest zone in all of the Dragon Isles, and I really prefer these types of sprawling zones with empty breathing space compared to the tight, claustrophobic zones we got in Shadowlands. You can yeah. also tell the terrain in this zone was specifically designed for dragon riding with its what I like about this zone is also it looks like uh, quite mysterious and stuff. If you have like those kind of pine woods, like those large ones with some like giant trees and stuff, like they have some sort of fantasy feeling. Like like there's something mystical about them, something mysterious. And I love this kind of zones that are mysterious. Or so if you have like a zone with a lot of fog and you're like go going through there's some kind of marsh, some swamp or something, this is also quite mysterious. So for me, like pine forests like this and also like swamps are very very interesting locations to quest through and explore i really like this this kind of feeling of something mystical something mysterious it is so nice and yeah by the way guys if you are new to this channel please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content and what is your favorite zone let me know in the comment section space compared to the tight claustrophobic zones we got in shadowlands you can also tell the terrain in this zone was specifically designed for dragon riding with its descending slopes and sharp cliff faces. One of my favorite parts when playing was during the main quest where I got to jump off of this giant spire and soar across the whole zone to get to my next location. My favorite questing hubs in this zone have got to be the dragon scale expedition camps because this is a horde and alliance organization so you get a yeah. wide variety of races all interacting with each other, all having their own unique little quirks, it's just a great fun time. I mean, there's this one quest where I was watching a Hearthstone match with a gnome where there was a ghost of a Is dragon Jaina? man that was battling a Pandaren, and I was one of the cards. No, I did not pull that out of my ass. There are other factions and races you'll find in your adventures in this zone, though. There are Furbolgs who got a new facelift, and they are harnessing they the powers nice. of the elements, and like it's corrupting the them. 
very furball thing to do. Tuscar, there are a lot of Tuscar Play in the Boris, zone, please. and their village in Iskara is one of the best parts of the zone, because they got Big Canuke making a giant-ass pot of soup. We got this dude over here drinking the soup. We got an instance portal, maybe for a Tuscar dungeon. We oh, got otters, please. and when you say goodbye to a Tuscar, they say, Tuskara Aklikat. And that is Gukulora just great. Ooh, Gara Glocky caught to you, my friend. And we'll be returning <laughs> to this village later in the video. I like that. There are also these giants, but they seem to Shadi be in early development Magnus. with their names, and there are no quests associated with them. You know what's like creepy about them? They they kind of look like uh, dark iron drops. I know that's not creepy, but uh, what is up with their bodies? They have like some some transparent part that shows like the inside of their body, and the inside of them is just freaking fire or something. But yeah, from like the color skin wise, even like the eyes a little bit, this reminds me a bit of Dark Iron Dwarfs. Their names right? and there are no quests yeah. associated with them. There are gnolls, which are another highlight of the zone. They look so their nice. new models look disgustingly fantastic and they yeah, make cool yeah. noises. <laughs> and while doing quests here, you discover like that they've been practicing decay magic. And near the back of their base camp, there is a huge empty area with an instance portal. So perhaps there might be a null dungeon as well. And, and lastly, since we are in the Dragon Isles, there are a lot of dragons. There's dragon spawn, dragon frogs, and dragon men with this voice. Good day to you. The main what? chunk of the story is from the main quest of the zone that is very, very early in development. There is no music, no voice acting. It's coming. No later. sound effects no cinematics. Instead of cinematics, you have Captain Exposition, who explains the cinematics through text. That is how alpha this alpha is. So I'm just gonna summarize the story. It's about Caligos trying to reunite the Blue Dragon Flight, but a group of proto-dragons called the Primalists are trying to stop wow. him and all of the Kirintor mages. It's, it's going to be a better story than Shadowlands, I think, already, and imagine you had this one as a freaking mount. Imagine this one actually drops a mount and it's him. And you can write that. I, I saw some really cool looking proto drakes there in this new zone. It is so nice. I, I hope we can get some of them as mounts like this one. <gasps> this would look so nice on like a fire mage or on any dark iron dwarf or even like shaman probably. Holy shit. I, I, I want this as a mount. The primalists are trying to stop him and all of the Kirintor mages. The Primalist's main motivation as an antagonist is to stop mortals from using magic since they can't be trusted with such power. Which Makes is sense. the exact same plot as Malagos from Wrath of the Lich King, but instead of blue dragons, it's proto-dragons. <laughs> also, Sindragosa is back in the story. Overall, the storyline is pretty basic, but it's That's really good. hard to give any sort of judgment when it's in such a bare-bones state at the moment. I think basic is better than complex because if you have a story that's way too complex and people don't understand what's going on, it doesn't make so much fun. It's not fun to quest because you, you're doing quests. You have no clue why you're doing this quest. Why are you killing this guy? Why is this person evil? Like a lot of people didn't understand why we had to fight against the jailer. What makes him evil and stuff. And I really don't want to see this in Dragonflight where you are like questing through and you are already after a couple of quests completely confused of what's going on. What's the main plot of the whole zone, the, the whole expansion, why is this person evil and it was just so confusing doing Shadowlands and you had to freaking read books to understand what's going on. Because apparently there are some novels and I haven't read them and they explain in more detail what's going on in the Shadowlands, why Sylvanas went this kind of direction and instead of sticking to the heart and, and being like the good person. Like, it's crazy. You need to read a book to understand it. And I don't want to see this in Dragonflight where you're questing through and then Blizzard is like, oh, you have to read a book, then you will understand what's going on. Like, why the heck as a hardcore gamer must I take time to read through a book with hundreds of pages to understand what's going on in the quests and stuff. It's stupid. Now, for the most harrowing part of my adventure in the Isles. Here at the Tuscar village of Iskara, there are two turtle boats you Every can ride on. Everyone loves Tuscar. You know me. Let's make them I a play love race. public transportation. So I just needed to ride on one of these bad boys and see nice. where it takes me. So I got on and went floating error away message. just to keep going further and further and then error and further away from the Dragon Isles to the point where I couldn't even see it anymore. What was even eerier is that this is the first time I ever heard music during my time playing. Maybe I'll land next to that island? 
Uh oh. Nope. What happens? It just turns around. And boom! I'm in Northrend, which makes sense thematically. I mean, this is where we first met the Tuscar in Northrend, so this is pretty cool. But a neat little yeah. detail to the zone. Now I'm assuming I'm just gonna float back to the Dragon Isles, and boom! Now I'm next to the Broken Shore in Legion. What What the hell is going on? Why is the turtle zone. taking me all over these pla- Next thing I know, I'm in Kul Taras! Wow, I'm just getting a world tour here, That's but the nice. views are uh, Horrible. less than spectacular. And my only friend to enjoy this with is my driver, Bex. Bex. And I've been on this boat for what? And now I'm in Vashir. And this is where it really hits me. It's uh, unfinished. I was stuck here. My hearthstone was set the Stormwind. And on the PTR, there was currently a bug where you could not travel back to the Dragon Isles if you teleport off of the continent. So I'm uh -oh. forced to endure. Beck's wild ride for God knows how long. Until you have He was no longer my guide. He was my jailer. The next oh, thing no. I know, I'm in Voldoon of all places, where oh, Beck nice. decides he wants to drive as slowly as possible. His dark, unforgiving eyes <laughs> looking ahead at all times. Please, please, please take me, just take me back to the Dragon Isles. But I do like this kind of traveling system. It reminds me of the good old vanilla days where you had to freaking take boats and the Zeppelin and go from place to place. And it does take a while to get somewhere. Oh, I remember like leveling up a Forsaken back in the day. I used to play a Forsaken Warrior for some time. And I remember the first time taking a Zeppelin from the like the Undercity, like ne next to Brill, between Undercity Brill to freaking Ogrima. It was like an interesting journey. So I was like on this flying ship and then I like look down and see like the surroundings, like all those trees and the gloomy area of Tirisfall. Then I end up uh, some so somewhere at the beach and stuff. And I see like the, the rocks of, of, of Durotar and stuff. It is really, really nice. Like I remember the, the old traveling. Now you have freaking portals. You just go there, you click on the portal and you already arrive where you want to be. I mean, it's more convenient, it's faster, but sometimes I miss this kind of traveling experience when I'm on like a Zeppelin, I get to like see the area or on a ship. Please, please. Oh my God. No, no, please, come on. Wow, through all expansions. Oh, now I'm in Pandaria. And Bex has completely given up on driving through scenic areas. Here we get a cliff face, and then this is my view of the Taolong steps. I want uh -oh. to get off of Bex's wild ride. There was at least a view. Come on, come on. No, no. Are you kidding me? Wait, where are you now? Oh my god. Where are you? I'm in AQ now. Thank you. <laughs> what the fuck? At this point, over I need to an take hour this boat. has passed and I have gone insane. I've spent over an hour on this godforsaken turtle, what? and I don't think I'll ever see my wife and kids again. Screw you, Beck. Over your one hour? Turtle. So it just takes five minutes per zone. <gasps> but he showed me mercy and finally returned me to the Dragon Isles. Now, oh, there no. are two of these turtles, but I really didn't have a lot of time to play this alpha, so two I really turtles. don't know where the other one would take me. <laughs> Maybe I should try to... There are two. There are two. Maybe the other. Maybe yeah. Maybe one goes like not not the same. Uh, like maybe one goes all, also through all expansions, but maybe the other one goes the other direction. So instead of going f like clockwise, you may be going counterclockwise through the expansions. So uh, sorry. Or guys. something like that. I don't know. Just kidding! I got on the other turtle, and after a slow ten-minute ride, he took me to this empty island. And now I'm stranded here. Well, you're kidding me, right? You can fly. Gara Glocky caught to you, my friends. <laughs> See you later. See you later. That was nice. Oh, we are back. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Like, it's interesting to see, like, what kind of experiences people are making in the Dragonflight Alpha. Like, it's completely unfinished stuff. I'm, I'm not really, like, I'm trying to avoid as much as I can to have, like, a look at Alpha stuff, right? Because I don't, like, I don't want to read too much of the story. I want the story to surprise me. I, like, so don't, please don't spoil anything in the comment section. Like, for me, I think Dragonflight could be a really good expansion. And one of the reasons why is not 
only is it like a simple story, but the zones look very, very mystical, very, very mysterious. I like that. I like having mysterious zones to quest through and stuff. And Evoker looks really fun. I love how they have like those kind of beam attacks coming from their freaking mouth and you're shooting those beams. It is really cool looking. They have cool animations and the fly looks very, very fun. Like I can see myself fly around for hours and just, just checking out the areas and I hope in the future, I'm not sure if they will make it possible that flying like this with like the dragon flight there, you can do this over the whole of Azeroth, including the old expansion zones. Like that would be so perfect. But yeah, what do you guys think about Dragonflight? What is your first impression about it? Let me know in the comment section. And if you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. And I will see you guys next time.